One of the things to be very aware of when you're doing exponents questions is the fact that so many of them say this. They say without using a calculator. And that is because for well, the grade 10 examples we're going to do today, a whole lot of them, for example, question B, could simply be typed into a calculator to get your answer. Now, of course, it's all about doing this quite cleverly. And by that, I mean, go ahead, type it into the calculator, get your answer and leave it on your calculator screen. But don't go and write it down until you've shown all the steps. And so what I'm saying is, don't use a calculator to actually do the work for you, but do it to check because it's always nice in a test condition or even just for doing homework, it's nice to know that you have gotten the right answer. Okay, so let's look at the tips here and a warning. The tip is to use prime bases and the warning is to never cancel over a plus or minus sign. We don't have any plus or minus signs in examples we're going to be doing at the moment, but you can see there's definitely one coming up over there. Okay, so let's have a go. When it comes to multiplying straight, and obviously those little dots stand for multiplying, all we're going to do is we're going to multiply the signs by the signs, and here these are all actually just plus, aren't they? The numbers by the numbers, that is the 2 by the 3, so that gives me the 6. And then the letters by the letters. And we're always going to multiply the letters that are like terms together because we're dealing with exponents. So a to the 2 times a to the 3 will be a to the, remember to add them at this point, we're not multiplying them. We're going to have like bases and exponents then get added so it's going to be 6a to the 5 and then we would multiply the b's together accepting there aren't any more and what we also need to remember is that anything to the power of 0 is 1 so that would just be times 1 so actually nothing further that would then be our answer for question b um, I've typed it into the calculator and I know that my answer is actually going to be just 3. But you can see that what I need to do is I need to show how I get to that answer. But in this case, I can at least know that I'm right when I do get there. Okay, so everything's already in prime bases. I don't have pluses or minuses. But what I am going to do is I'm going to put a mindful 1 in over there because that's 3 to the 1. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my base that is the same for all of these numbers, I'm going to add the exponent, so it's going to be 3 to the power of 5 plus 1 plus 3, so that's 3 to the 9, and then at the bottom I'm going to have 3 to the 2 plus 6, so 3 to the 8, and then I'm going to use that rule about dividing, which is that we subtract the exponents as long as the bases are the same. So my rule is the big exponent minus the small one, so 9 minus 8 in this case, and the answer goes where the big one was. For my third example, I'm raising powers to this further power of 2. So I need to be aware of the fact that the negative 3 is going to be raised by 2, and I'm just going to pop a 1 in there to remind myself that its exponent is 1 and hopefully what that will do is stop me from multiplying negative 3 by 2 because I've got to multiply the 1 by 2 and then a's 3 will be multiplied by 2 and b will get a little mindful 1 to multiply that by 2 and then this 2 that exponent does not apply to the denominator it's just for the numerator okay let's go everything gets a power of 2 so negative 3 I'm keeping it in brackets. I can actually sneakily go and do that on the calculator, just that baby step, if it is something that I'm not sure about. A will get a power of 3 times 2, so it'll be A to the 6. And then B is to the 1, so B will now be to the 2. And this will be over my A to the 5 
B to the 3. Now I need to clean up the top part and then I can do some dividing. That gets me to 9. A to the 6, B to the 2 over a to the 5, b to the 3, and then of course I can do my adding and subtracting, which will leave a 9 on top, because that's going nowhere, and I'm not dividing it by anything at the bottom. Big minus small means I have a to the 6 and a to the 5. 6 minus 5, an answer goes at the top, with a to the 1 if you want to write the 1 in, but with the b, it's 3 minus 2, and the answer goes where the big one was, which is at the bottom. With question D, we've got the power this time applied to the entire fraction. And one of the ways that I find to be quite helpful, and that a lot of people like doing, is to swap the top and the bottom because there is a negative exponent on the outside and then you treat the exponent as positive. So it's a nice little hack uh, but what sometimes people do is when they swap and they then make everything change sign because that is normally what you have to do when you swap it. So here's a reminder that if you have a negative exponent and you are raising an entire bracket to a negative exponent you may simply swap what's inside the bracket, as in you may swap the numerator with the denominator, and then make that exponent positive. Okay, and that's something that's coming up in a moment, that you should always leave answers with positive exponents anyway, so it's not a bad idea to start off like that. Okay, with this question, there really are quite a few ways of doing it. I'm going to follow what I've suggested because I think it's helpful. But what you could also do is you could just multiply in this negative 3 into 2 to the 1, for example, and have 2 to the negative 3, x to the negative 9, and so on, just like we did question C. So you could follow along now with me, do it your own way, and see if you arrive at the same answer as I do. Okay, so I'm going to swap everything. I'm going to have my 8 y to the negative 4, I'm just popping it exactly as it is, over 2x to the 3, and now when I swap it, it has become a positive exponent. And I can see immediately that 8 and 2 need to be cancelled with each other, and these are inside the brackets, so I can definitely handle them on their own and simplify what's in the brackets before raising. Because remember that your bod mass, or bed mass, that we've been teaching since grade 8, means to do brackets first. And that means if there's anything you can sort out inside the brackets, you should. It's, it's a lot better than going and applying this exponent and then trying to sort it out after that. Because then you have 8 to the power of 3, which I'm not saying is undoable. It's just really clunky and it would be better to avoid it. And anyway, bed, bed mass tells us we should. Okay, so my 2 goes into itself once and into 8 four times. So immediately I'm left with 4 y to the negative 4 over just x to the 3. Okay, and all of that gets taken to the power of 3. And now I'm going to add in my exponent. And if I add, I don't actually mean add, I just mean apply it. So it's going to be 2 power. So I must remember that 4 is going to have a power of 1 here, so it's going to end up being 4 to the 1 times 3, which is 3. y is going to be to the negative 12, and at the bottom the x will be to the power of 9. And then all I've got to do now to finish my answer is to move that y down to the bottom so that I end up with a positive exponent. I should then also work out 4 to the 3, or you might know it off by heart already, it's 64. But when we say don't use the calculator, things like that as a little baby step, we won't even know that you're using it. Um, and the general rule is powers of 2 and 3 you need to actually multiply out, and everything else you can leave in exponential form. My x will stay where it is, but now my y will move, and when it moves without having an exponent that you're raising it by, it just moves and it changes sign. And so there is my answer. With question E, 
that advice we got earlier about using prime bases is going to be really, really useful. Because you can't do anything with numbers that don't have the same bases. I can't multiply the 16 by the 8. However tempting that might be, it's going to get me nowhere. So I need to first get them into prime bases. Now, this one you might be able to see. We probably all know that 16 is just 2 to the 4. And 8 is just 2 to the 3. So rewrite with the prime bases. But if you didn't know that, or when you're given numbers that don't make it that easy, I'd like to remind you of the fact button on your Casio. So what you would do is you would type in the number, say 16, you'd press equals, and then you would go shift, and then you would press your fact button, and it would come up with exactly what I put down there, 2 to the 4 and 2 to the 3. Okay, with that as is, you can now have 2 to the 4. I can't multiply that into the 2 to the 3 yet, because following bed mass, I need to deal with the exponent first, which means I first need to multiply that by 2 to the negative 12. And then I have 2s, and I don't multiply them to get 4, because what I'm dealing with is the exponents, and you can't do both. You can't be dealing with numbers that you multiply when they already have exponents and when they are the same bases. Now you need to apply the rules that go along with exponents. Okay, exponents kind of overrule all other kinds of um, multiplication that you might be thinking about. So now I'm just going to say 2 to the 4 minus 12. So I'm going to have 2 to the negative 8. Now I need to leave my answer with positive exponents. So once again, I'm going to move that to the bottom to make it positive. Question F is going to go similarly in that I must get things into prime bases first. Okay, you might know that nine and 27 will end up having the same bases, but I can't divide them. I can't say nine goes into itself once and into 27 three times. And the reason is the exponent overrules me. Right, so nine has to be changed into three to the two, and then that takes the power of four. And 27 needs to be changed into 3 to the 3. Okay, using the fact button or your knowledge of um, powers. And then that's going to become 3 to the 2 times 4. So that is 3 to the 8. And then at the bottom, I still have just 3 to the 3. And then 8 minus 3 is 5. And my answer is going to be 3 to the 5. I can go and work that out on the calculator. I don't happen to know that one off by heart. And I don't need to go any further because it's not a power of two or three. My last example has what I like to call the handbrake, which is a plus or minus dividing terms. When I say dividing, I mean that it's splitting them up. And so you have more than one term going on here. And that means we need to factorize or hopefully things add or subtract. More about that in my video on adding and subtracting. But it definitely needs to tell you to stop and think and do something else before you just simplify. Okay, this one's going to work out quite nicely and we won't have to factorize. But I want you to be aware of the fact that that is still a possibility. Okay, let's just clean up as much as we can at the numerator. So what I'm going to do at the top there is I'm going to... Multiply those, put a big plus, multiply those, and then see what happens after that. Okay, sign by sign, negative times a positive is a negative. Number by number, three times two is six. Letter by letter, x to the three times x to the two is x to the, adding them up now, x to the five. Okay, on this side of the plus sign, a negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 1 is 2, and x to the 4 times x to the 1 will be x to the 5, and this is what I was meaning when I said it's all going to work out quite nicely. I've actually got like terms at the top. I could actually just take out x to the 5 and have negative 6 plus 2, and then I have negative 4x to the 5, but I'm going to just do that in my head anyway. Okay, at the bottom, just be aware now, these questions are all designed to have little tricks in them. I've got negative and then a bracket and then an exponent. And your brain might tell you you'd like to multiply that negative in first. And I'm going to say no, leave it exactly where it is 
and raise everything first to the power of two. And here's a reminder, the four is to the power of one, and when it gets the two, you are multiplying its exponent by the two, not the four. Okay, so there inside the brackets, I've actually got negative four to the two. Luckily, it's a even number exponent, so that negative is going to fall away. And then my x to the four is going to be x to the four times two, so that will be x to the eight. All right, let's sort out the top and the bottom. At the top, I'm going to have my negative four x to the five, and at the bottom, I'm going to have negative, and inside here that negative 4 squared is going to be the same as 4 squared, right? So that is going to be 16 x to the 8. I don't actually need these brackets here, I just put them in for my own um, awareness of what's going on. Okay, so let's be really clear, that is negative 4 x to the 5 over negative 16 x to the 8. And that will simplify really nicely. The negatives will cancel, all goes into itself once. I can put the one down if I want, or I can leave it out into 16 four times, and then x to the eight and x to the five. Eight minus five is three, and the answer goes where the big one was. Turns out I had to have this one at the top there, because otherwise I'm not going to write this as a fraction correctly.